wicked, wicked fly. Welcome to this new season of the Have a Cup of Jahani podcast. So I want to title this new season that I'm embarking on with I'm growing. So this is going to be the season of growth. And um, that's what I'm going to share with you throughout the season. So I thank you for coming over here and sitting with me. And I hope you enjoy. Hello, everyone, and welcome. So I must warn you, today it is too cold for me to be in the garage. So I am inside. And as you may or may not know, I have um, fur babies that are very vocal. (laughs) So you may hear either one of them, either La Lady or Octavia. Octavia is a a little kitten and La Lady is the massive German shepherd that has anxiety issues. So she cries quite a lot. So if you hear either one of those, don't worry. They're well taken care of. They just happen to be very spoiled. (laughs) Anyways, welcome. Today is the last recording that I will do for the month of February. So I will start by saying that I set out to embark on the theme of self-love. And I was prompted by buying and reading the book that is titled, let me give you that, it's Self-Care for Latinas. And I believe it has the word 100 in it, but let me search it really quick. Hold on. Ooh, there it is. Self-care for Latinas, 100 plus ways to prioritize and rejuvenate by Raquel Ricard. And I know I'm continuously saying that name wrong, and I apologize for that. I first saw it in January at the beginning of uh, this 2024 year, and I immediately thought that I needed that book because being born into and coming from and being raised in the Latinx, specifically Dominican culture, it is quite ingrained in us and inculcated in us, particularly the women folk, to put ourselves aside for the greater good of others, whether it be our parents, our grandparents, our kids, our spouses, our significant others, our families, our entire communities. And that has been the norm for as long as I can remember it, that a woman sacrifices for others. So self-care and self-love for me it really is just an act of rebellion <laughs> because I've been taught to do otherwise. So when I saw this book, I was like, I need to get it because this is something that I will need to be reminded of. I will need to continuously advocate for myself, read about it. So that way it's at the forefront of my mind. And because of that, I was like, let's talk about it, right? Because this show is all about learning and growing. Because if you're not learning and growing, you're just not growing, period. And I'm an advocate for growth and self-development. Hence why I have this podcast. All right. So because of that, I was like, let me make myself vulnerable and talk about this. It's hard and it's a continuous learning thing for me. And I think it will be that way for the rest of my life. And that is to care for self and love for self. Saying that today's episode in particular, I'll be talking about how I learned and I'm still learning how to overcome my fear of just being authentically me. I got to take a pause there because I'm like, how am I, how am I going to present this? How, how am I going to talk about this? So I am and have always been as long as I can remember just this hardcore nerd. I mean, there's no other way. I can't sugarcoat that. I, I've i always, and, and I know like, I think now being a nerd is in vogue. I guess now it's it's popular. Growing up, it was not so popular, right? <laughs> It was it was quite frowned upon, and and really, people will be very hateful 
uh, towards anyone that enjoy books and enjoy the scholarly lifestyle as I do. Yeah, so it was quite hard to be authentically me. So uh, thank the God is for every single geek that has come forth and have made it easier for all of us now because, ooh, it was quite hard out there for a geek. Presenting myself and embracing myself, flaws and all, was not something that came easily. Easier thing for me to be was just being a person that looks different. Like you have heard me say a million times and I'll continue to say because it's not something that I hide from. I can't, I just can't, right? I can't wear sunglasses every single time I'm outside, right? (laughs) So everybody knows I have a lazy eye. I have extra ocular muscles that not all of them are just as strong on my right eye. So it, it looks uh, different because the eye is tilted towards the, the outer corner just because the extra ocular muscles are not all strong there. So because it presents itself, right, that way of being is just always in the forefront. People see that. That's like the first thing that people see when they meet me. And and it's funny to see reactions. I, every single day of my life, I see these reactions. It's just is it's very funny to me um, now. I've gotten so used to it. It's just it it is what it is, right? It's not even my second skin. It's the skin that I live in. Yeah, and I'm quite content with it. And I've I've learned to love it uh, for a long time. Yeah, like I, I've said before, I had to learn to love myself as a person that looks different with a lazy eye that is very visible to everybody and and I learned to do that at a very at a young age just because survival right if I wouldn't have had then I just I wouldn't be here uh, to talk to you today just because it's so hard being and looking different and being in a world where people feel that it's okay to dehumanize, to mistreat, and to be violent upon people that look different. Um, So I learned how to have a quick mouth (laughs) with combat. Uh, I learned to uh, be able to throw some hands too, you know, because of that. And I just became ferociously me without filter and and just loving all of it uh, because of that. Uh, but being a geek was different, right? Because being a geek is not something that presents itself physically. It, it's something that you have internally. So I remember being young and playing as if I didn't know certain things and and then seeing the the reaction, I will say a positive reaction from others, particularly from the male species. They they will smile. It, it was like this happiness that I will see in them when they found out that there was something that they knew that I didn't. And when you see that uh, as a young girl uh, trying to find their place, right? And I'm already struggling with acceptance just because physically I look different, right? So here I go, right? Little Joa, right? Physically, she's different. Internally, she's also different, but she's trying to hide that because it's already enough to be different physically. So for the longest, I, I did hit that I enjoyed books, that I enjoyed reading. But even that didn't last long because when when you're in school and you enjoy books and all of that, it usually translates to uh, test scores. It usually translates to to things that are very visible to everyone, and and it, and eventually it just it's like this secret, right, that comes out in front of everyone in, in the classroom. And teachers, I I love teachers, but they just, they can't hold water at all. Like when they find out that somebody is uh, traditionally smart, you know, they're good test takers and they have a good memory. They, you know, they can memorize everything because I think that's, that's all this is. It's not like I'm particularly more intelligent than the next person. It's just that I have an ability to memorize things. And, and I love to read. And it just because of that, then it's easier for me to take tests as opposed to other folks. 
but I'm a big believer that we're all smart. We just uh, digest information differently and therefore um, the, the intelligence and the smart that we have reflects differently. Uh, so that's why I say I was Lee, I'm still am traditionally a smart person. And because of that, then teachers were very loud about it uh, to the point where they would say it in front of class. And of course, that that just like ruined. <laughs> it ruined my life. No, <laughs> but I mean, it just it, it ruined any chances of me keeping that to myself. And I'm not even going to blame the teachers uh, for it, really. I mean, I was coming out of school with like a stack of books and everything like that. So, you know, because it just I would just get so happy whenever I had a chance to to get books and, and bring it home and, and read and all of that. And once my grandma like taught me to read fluently, then it was a wrap, folks. It was just completely uh, just a wrap. Like I was digesting everything as if it was going out of style. So then I couldn't hide that, right? So now I have two things, per se, air quotes here, going against me with the rest of the population that is not exactly at the same. So so then, you know, I become ostracized and then I, I figure out that if I help other people, the other children in my classroom, right, with answers and with things like that, that they'll like me. So then I started doing that. Then I started helping classmates. But that was not the right thing to do, right? Because I'm not supposed to give other people the answer to tests or do their homeworks for them. And then I know there was a point there while I was doing it that I realized that these kids were not really my friends. And my sister was very real with me. My sister is a year older than me and she was always ahead of me in school. And she would have these very real conversations with me when we were young and being raised by our grandmother in the Dominican Republic. And and she explained that they only liked me because of what I was doing for them. And that, ladies and gentlemen, that like I'm telling you, my childhood made me grow up and learn these very adult things very early on. And I don't know whether to be thankful for it or just be like, dang, can't believe it. But I'll choose to be thankful, right? Uh, and, and I learned that very early on that sometimes, sometimes people like you for the things that you can do for them, not necessarily because they like you be- because there's some commonality there uh, between the the two people. And I learned that then when I became friends with a lot of people just because of what I was doing uh, for them. And of course, eventually I got tired because that's not sustainable. And I remember there's not a lot of things that I remember in my childhood. I remember things that left an impression on me. And, And I remember not doing it. You know, I don't know what happened, but knowing me, I probably got fed up and then just blew up because my coping thing was to not say anything, held on to it, held on to it until it just I just blew up because I was so fed up with it. And I'm pretty sure that's probably what happened here. And then I remember being lonely once again and just having a a very few single digit uh, friends, those friends that were with me. Um, those friends that they didn't needed me to do things for them, for them to like me. So and I just kept the same friends. And I learned a valuable lesson that those that are with me from the beginning, uh, those are usually the, the ride or die. Those are, those are my true friends, that they were with me even when I couldn't do anything for them, even when I was having a hard time and they still stuck through. So I also learned that lesson then by being authentically me and by enforcing boundaries at at such a young age, then I had an insight into. We'll be right back. Are you ready to embark on a captivating journey of resilience and revelation? Get ready to immerse yourself in the extraordinary world of Isla Delgado, a nine-year-old girl who has experienced more than her fair share of trauma. 
Isla's life takes a dramatic turn when she's forced to live with her dad and his new wife for six months. Her anxiety intensifies as she becomes convinced that her stepmom is an evil witch. But Isla is determined to protect herself and expose her stepmom's true nature. As the gripping story unfolds, Isla discovers that things aren't always as they seem. Join her on a transformative journey of self-discovery, where she learns that even the most traumatic experiences can be triumphantly overcome with the power of love and understanding. People are saying, while the alarming trend of attempting to ban books continues in the United States, this book is a fantastic reminder of the power that books have. A child will read this story and feel seen, heard, and hopefully feel some peace. For children of the appropriate age, this book provides the opportunity for a wonderful exercise in empathy. The message of the story is truly something a lot of children out there and even some adults might need to hear. Mrs. Franchi's Evil Ring and the Six Months That Change Everything is a heartwarming tale that explores the profound theme of family, trust, and the power of compassion. This inspiring story will leave listeners of all ages feeling uplifted and inspired. Don't miss out on this middle grade read and be prepared to be captivated by a story that will touch your heart and ignite your imagination. Mrs. Franchi's Evil Ring is available everywhere books are sold. How I will traverse through life later on as an adult. Mind you, this is just me now looking back at that. At that point, I didn't have any of these epiphanies or, or, or wisdom. I was just really trying to make it through school and the social circles at school. But there are some times when I'm a teenage when I try to be somebody else. And I blame that to the hormones and trying to figure out who I am and, and, and all of that. And I think every teenager goes through that where they embody different personas until they're comfortable in the persona that they embody, which is probably who they were to begin with. I dress differently. I did makeup differently, try the whole sunglass thing, you know, and, and just like I am, I eventually just got sick of it because it's like, it just felt so tiring. I'm the kind of person that if it, if it takes too much energy, then I'm probably not going to do it. And the things that take too much energy out of me are usually things that I have to pretend to be if that makes sense, or when I have to put on a mask because I'm pretending to be something or someone, then it takes a lot of energy out of me. And then I end up not doing that for too long. And, and that's what occurred through my teenage years when I, I really did embody these personas. I would not hold on to it for too long because they were just not me. So I ended up shedding them and um, becoming something else who I ended up figuring out uh, later on that that was the the true Joanny, uh, the real person behind it all. But I tried again to pretend I was dumb. <laughs> that backfired, though, because I ended up doing really bad in one of my classes when I could have just aced it. Um, all because of that peer pressure. Man, peer pressure as a teenager sucks. That thing sucks hardcore. And like I said, I tried the different outfits and all of that and and try dating and all of that. But at that time, I still didn't love myself. So none of that stuck. It was almost as if not loving myself, I was so rejectful of, of anyone that would come close to me. It's like the weirdest thing uh, to explain. Even when I felt like, physically attracted to somebody or wanting to be with somebody, it was always like this barrier uh, there that I couldn't break through because I I didn't love and appreciate self. And it's kind of hard, I would say, to to love someone or to attach yourself to somebody when you are not being your authentic self. It, it's really hard to do. And I think that's what was happening there. 
And I remember ghosting and and dodging uh, certain people just because I would come to the realization that "Mm, I didn't really like them, but I just didn't have the heart to make them feel bad and, and then to say it to their face. So I wasn't that confident then, but I knew that that was not the right person. That was not the right thing to be doing at the time. So I would just kind of like skid out of there, you know, quietly and then just let it run its course. And I and I did that quite a few times uh, when I was a teenager. And yeah, and that's an adult too. Y'all need to hear those episodes. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. I'm happily married and stable. But yeah, and I think it all stems from not embracing who I was and and being my authentic self. Now, Fast forward and and I'm an adult and nothing really, the core of me has not changed. Um, I'm still a, a geek. I'm still a nerd. I still love to read and write, love to digest information and learn new things every day. Um, I, I'm still the same person with the lazy eye that looks awkward and, and, and it's socially awkward mostly because of that. And there's an anecdote that I remember I already had my kid and I love Hello Kitty stuff. I love it. I I, I was a hardcore pink enthusiast. Uh, now I'm more into the darker colors. I still like the vibrant pinks and the vibrant yellows. Uh, but now as I'm getting older, I don't know what it is. It's like the more neutral or dark colors are really kind of like drawing me in. But back then it was like hardcore pink, um, Hello Kitty. I remember I used to have a Hello Kitty phone and I was in my 30s. <laughs> and I remember putting water in my Hello Kitty bottle and and looking at it. And I was thinking out loud and I not realizing that my son was there. And And I was like, oh, I should just use the plain gray one. Uh, that I have because then people at work are going to make fun of me because I have Hello Kitty and I'm like 30 years old, you know? And and I didn't realize that I was saying this out loud in the kitchen. And and I remember my son, then all of a sudden I feel like my son right next to me and he's looking up to me and he was like, mommy, you tell me not to care about what people think of me, but to care more about how I think of me and how I feel about myself. And and when he said that, this little wise, little short thing next to me, I I remember looking at him and being like, God, I created a monster. That <laughs> no, I, I I didn't say that. I looked down, I was like, you know what? You're right. You're right. Why, why should I care? You know, they don't pay my bills. You know, they don't live with me. You know, why should I care? And then I remember Jonathan, he just smiled and he kind of like, you know, shook his head like, yeah, I taught mommy something today. And he surely did. He taught me something that day. He reminded me that I need to be my authentic self. And I need to respect myself and love myself so other people will do the same. And if they don't, to keep moving on. So I will leave you all with that. I thank you for listening to my ramblings today. If you don't take anything out of this conversation, take this, that those who love the real you, those are the ones that you need to keep around. If you have to be somebody else for others to love you, they don't really love you. All right. I will see you next Wednesday or whenever it is that you choose to listen to this podcast. I'll leave that up to you. I am still thinking about the theme for March. So come back and find out what that theme will be. And if you have any suggestions, I am literally this old crone that have kind of like accumulated a lot of anecdotes uh, from which to pick. So if you have a theme that you want me to poke at or talk about, 
let me know. Email me at joa at haveacupofjoani.com. That is joa at haveacupofjoani.com. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Oh, we could, we could fly. Thank you so much for listening. I want to hear from you. Leave me a comment. Do a rating if you can on the podcast. Share it with somebody you love. But most importantly, come back. See you next time. Bye.